Hello. Hello, Elder Pursuits, Mr. Lawrence here, and we are going to do a quick review of what we've talked about. Remember the first day we learned um, about, uh, oh, my calligraphic pen isn't working. Very interesting. Uh, there it goes. Anyway, the first day we talked about linear equations, right? I guess I could start on a different page. Linear equations. And we talked about that equation. Whoa, what is that, Mr. Lawrence? I'm trying to turn that into an A, and it's not working so well. There we go. We had the D equals RT, right, uh, for linear movement. Distance equals rate times time. And uh, our graphs turned out to be some type of line graph, right? Sometimes they moved up and then down. Wow, my airliner seems to be off. That's very strange. Anyway, and then the next day we talked about quadratics. Whoa, I could only learn to spell, sorry. Okay, Q-U-A-D-R, there we go, quadratics. And uh, we ended up with parabolic motions, right? Maybe throwing a ball or a rock falling off a cliff or something like that. Uh, and the linear equations look something like this, right? And then the quadratic equations are going to look something like this. Lots of variations of them. Okay, uh, and there's another type we're gonna equation we're gonna look at in a minute. It's called exponential. But let's take a look at this table I've prepared here. Now let's pretend that uh, y1 and y2 and y3 are data collected by three different students. Okay, not necessarily of the same thing. In fact, they'll definitely be different. Uh, but this little one here isn't an exponent. It just means first y. This is the second y, and here's the third y. If you'd like to give the students names, we can do that. Let me see. Let's call, let's call y1. Oh, who should we call it? Let's call it Laney. This is the data that Laney collected. Wow, this is really acting up. Sorry about that. Okay, let's call y2. Oh, let's see. Who can we call that? We can call Y2 Sean. And then Y3, we can call Ezra. All right. There we go. Sorry, that's supposed to be an hour there, but like I said, it's acting a little strange for me. So, Lainey's data that she collected, um, we're reading down when x was 1 or when the time was 1, the y was 3. Now maybe it's a change in elevation, maybe it's not. I'm not sure, it's just data. And when we're at 2, then we're at 8. And 3, 13, 4, 18, 5, 23, 6, 28. And then it skips down to 10 and goes to 48. Well, if you take a look at Laney's data, you notice it's increasing by a constant amount every time. This is plus 5. Okay, this is plus 5. This is plus 5. This data is linear. This is linear data. A linear data will go up by the same amount every time. Now, it doesn't mean somebody's walking. Uh, it could be a lot of different things. In fact, I can tell you the equation for Laney's data is definitely y equals 5x minus 3. Um, I know this because I created the video. You'll know how to do that eventually this year. It's really pretty easy, but uh, right now you probably couldn't come up with that, and that's okay. All right, now let's look at Sean's data. And Sean's data is going, what, plus 3, and plus 5, and then plus 7, and plus 9, and plus 11. And I can't say plus here because it doesn't go from 6 to 7, it goes from 6 to 10. But you notice it's going when x is 1, y is 1. x is 2, y is 4. 3, 9, 4, 16. It's climbing a little faster. And you don't see uh, this constant growth until you go look at the second difference and you get plus 2 and then 5 to 7, it's 2 more. And then 7 to 9 is also 2 more. And notice that becomes 
a constant pattern. And again, I can't do this one because I need would go 9 to 10, not 6 to 10. Uh, this, when the second difference is always the same in the data, that tells you that the data is quadratic. Okay, that's quadratic. Okay, now, the equation for this one, and again, you wouldn't necessarily know this. You might be able to figure it out. You've seen this, but it's y equals x squared. And the second layer was plus 2, so it's, it's going to be an x squared. Okay, now this third one is really different. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and erase these pluses and stuff, get them out of my way here. Because if, if you check this out, it's kind of crazy. The, the quadratic is obviously starts to climb faster than the uh, linear at some point. It starts off la two less, and it's four less, it's four less, and now it's only two less again, now it's two more, and now it's eight more, and when you get up to ten, it's uh, 52 more, and it's never looking back. It's definitely growing at a faster rate. It takes a little while to pass up the linear data, but once it does, it takes off. Okay, this one, Ezra's data. If you compare it, um, well, it's actually more than the quadratic on the first one, but then it's the same. And then the quadratic data, Sean's data, is more than Ezra's, but then it's the same again. It's kind of weird, you know, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden Ezra just takes off. Boom, he's seven more. And on six, he's uh, 58 more. Um, 58, excuse me, 28 more. I knew 58 didn't sound quite right. 28 more. And then here, oh my goodness, look at look at the difference. Okay, you take 100 away from that, and you're at 924 more. Uh, so at 10, it, it's huge. If we'd go up to 20 with this table, man, Ezra would just be flying off the handle. Okay, now uh, it won't always be more if we go into the negative Sean's will end up being more in, on the whole negative side. Uh, but anyway, if we try to figure out a pattern for Ezra, it's kind of weird because if we go, well, it goes plus 2 and then plus 4 and then plus 8 and then plus 16 and then plus 32. If we try to go to the next level, look what happens. We get the same thing. It just repeats again and again and again forever. I mean, if I give you enough data, you could make this tree go out to the right. So that's kind of futile because it's just the same thing over and over and over again. So I don't want to waste my time doing that. But those of you that are pretty sharp, kind of like Irina, you might notice that I could turn 2 into 4 by multiplying by 2. I don't just have to add 2. And I can turn 4 into 8 by multiplying by 2 and multiplying by 2. So the data is doubling every time, right? The data is doubling every time. When you have data that's doubling every time or tripling every time or something like that, it's called exponential. Exponential data. And that's what we're talking about today. Exponential data, this equation would look like y equals 2 to the power x. Notice the variable is the exponent. See the x? The variable is the exponent. Okay? In the other situations, linear, there was a term that was a variable, but it wasn't an exponent. The exponent is constant. Uh, and y equals 5x minus 3. Remember, the exponent on x is 1. Okay, that's always 1. That doesn't change. And y equals x squared, the exponent is 2. Okay, that doesn't change. The base can change here, and the base can change there, right? In a, in a number like this, 5 to the 4th, 4 is the exponent, 5 is the base. Okay, and for those of you that don't remember, uh, this would mean... 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. It means four fives multiplied together. And I believe that's 625 if memory serves. All right. Now, let's take an example. Uh, take a better look at exponential data. And exponential is pretty powerful. 
because it grows really quick. And we can use exponential data to explain uh, population growths, uh, meaning like if a uh, city of Cleveland is gaining people, it hasn't been gaining people for a while, but let's pretend at a rate of 1% per year, we can use an exponential equation to tell us how many people will be living in that in the city of Cleveland hey, 15 years from now if the rate holds. Uh, bacteria growth is exponential. Okay. Now, a long time ago, there used to be a shampoo commercial about a friend telling two friends, and they tell two friends. They were actually uh, doing exponential growth. Uh, there's also a movie called Pay It Forward, and in the movie Pay It Forward, a little boy says, I decided to help three friends, and I didn't charge them for the help. I just told them, hold on, where are you? I told them that they had to help three friends. So here's the little boy, this first circle. He's helping three friends. Now, this person here, the first one he helped, is supposed to help three friends. And then this person's supposed to help three friends. And then this person's supposed to help three friends. Or three people. They don't have to be friends necessarily. And then from here, oops, sorry. Maybe I should just go to a pen. This isn't working so well. Okay. This guy is supposed to help three. Okay. This here is supposed to go three people. This one's helping three. And you see this tree is getting kind of messy because so much data is happening so quickly. Okay. If, uh, if I make a table of this data, okay, we started with the little boy, right? So let's just call it, uh, oh, I can't uh, get that to move. There we go. We started with just the little boy. So uh, at time zero, when we're just starting, nobody's told anybody anything, there's one person, and uh, he hasn't done anything, and so far nobody's been helped. Okay, And then instead of waiting for somebody to help him, he decides to help three people. So he helps three people, and three people have been helped. But then the next movement, each of these three people helps three people. And so where are we at here on our little thing? So we've got three, six, and nine. Okay. And then the total people have been helped is 12 because the, the three from here and the nine there makes 12. See, I'm just adding these two together to get the 12. Okay. Well, with the next level of the tree, then these nine people have to each help three. Well, now I'm up to 27, okay? And if I look, all of a sudden, 12 plus 27, uh, I'm at 39. And, and watch how this table is growing. This is exponential growth. It just takes off. It gets to the point where it gets too big to do in my head. I believe this will be 81. And then where am I at? Zero, 120 people have been helped. Okay, and all because this little boy started helping some people. Now, of course, if some people uh, don't do their share, I don't know why it's giving me the option to delete that. Oh, that's why there's a little mark over it. Okay, I am having some trouble here. Let me go to a new page and see if I can't reproduce this table. So anyway, let me do it real quick here. So at time zero, there was one person and nobody's been helped yet. At the first movement, the boy helped three. Three people have been helped. Second movement, we're at nine. And then 12 people have been helped. The third movement, these nine help. And so 27 more get help. Now we're up to 39. Fourth, then we got 81 people getting help because each of these 27 people is helping three. And then we're at uh, 120. And if I go to five, I think 
if each of the 81 is helping people, we're at 243, 243. Um, sorry, mental blank. We got 363 here. Look at how many people have been helped just by this cascading effect. You know, this guy helps three. And each of these three help three. So it is, boom, it just grows and grows and grows. Uh, if I go six, I wonder if I can do six in my head. Uh, 243, I don't think I'm doing it in my head, but I can figure it out. Um, nine, carry on, 729 are been helped. And, and look at that, it, it's just humongous. And if I do uh, 729 and 363, if I add those together, I get 291,092 with only going down six levels. Now remember, these are kind of like our X numbers. These are our Y numbers. Okay, uh, this is just like a summation, a total number. This is really taking off. Well, this is exponential growth. Very, very powerful. It happens this way in the real world. Uh, you can get your money to grow exponentially, uh, and it's a, such a wonderful thing uh, because you can invest some money, and then over time, uh, you end up with a lot more money than you started with. All right, uh, we're going to cut the video there. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.